Okay, so Furigana and Ramaji, as far as Japanese goes, Furigana is basically just an alteration for how to simplify um, Japanese kanji with hiragana and katakana, or kana for short, which is hiragana and katakana, the basic letters. So that way it's easier to identify what the kanji itself is because, you know, maybe not everybody, you know, can be able to read them all. Sometimes you'll play games and they'll have like the kanji and then they'll have the letters written above them. That's the hero, that's the furigana portion of it. Or they might have it in parentheses right next to it. You know, just written out again. Usually just an identification so that way it's easier to understand what it is. You know, because you, you like for example you might have a child reading it and maybe they haven't gotten that far to the grade level yet to understand certain kanji. Because it, it, it can happen. Kanji is like usually one of the last things you learn too. When learning Japanese. Um, and Rabaji is basically just writing the symbols into English letters. And I recommend learning Rabaji because sometimes things are written in Rabaji rather than their symbol form. So while they have the same, it, you really just have to figure out what the, what the words and letters are. But once you figure out like what the letters are and what they read as, you basically can figure out like what you're reading. You know? So everything is spelled the same way, it's just in letter formation rather than symbol formation. So I would recommend learning both because it makes things a little bit easier. Especially if you know English, you'll be familiar with English letters. It might be spelled a little bit different, but once you get used to the Japanese setup of it, it's a lot easier than you think it is.